a special prayer uh, for continue for Pastor Joseph Anthony as he's making great recovery. God bless you, Pastor Anthony. I thank you for calling me yesterday, giving an update on his uh, uh, progress. Uh, but also, I want you to be praying for uh, Pastor Mike. Uh, he's been admitted to the hospital. Uh, he's got some major challenges going on right now. So we're going to believe God for a miracle uh, for him. Um, so let's let's do that. Be prayer for that, and pray for your leadership as well. All right, let's let's get into the message. We're talking about unlocking wisdom and knowledge. Now, I love to do illustration. I've always done that since the time I've been in ministry. Back in the day, I had this uh, overhead projector uh, system, uh, and I would have my message written out, and and, and Sandy would. Uh, you've been with me a long time. Yeah, <laughs> good Jesus. <laughs> You, I, you almost like the other mic, timeless, you know. And uh, she would actually, uh, as I was mentioned, she would push it up. And that before they had the visual, they all, everything was that project that way. We felt like we was on top of the world. We thought we was technology. Oh God, with a Flintstone mentality. <laughs> but um, and I would always found it very prudent to allow people to follow the message and be able to see it because the, if the message is visual it makes you understand the, the content of it. It helps you to walk in that. Yeah. So, uh, and all this came through the Holy Spirit itself. Yeah. So we went from that to the overhead projector to the actually uh, screen, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Then went from that to actually uh, smart TV. So uh, we always been evolving in different faith, but it's all because of knowledge. Right. Knowledge gave us the ability to do the things that we need to do, but it took wisdom to make it work good because you can have knowledge and you, you don't have wisdom you just got knowledge you know you like someone said you, you book smart but you got no earth no uh street sense mm -hmm. that's that's a street wisdom sense uh i remember i went to new york acting like holly duty you know where i'm speaking to everybody you know my, i was given knowledge to do that but i, I omit that knowledge and, and walked in my own wisdom and they start circling around me like they about to, like a vulture you know, but god is good even in our stupidity, he will help us. So I have a set of keys here, and these keys consist of uh, one is for my wife's vehicle, uh, one is for mine, and one is for the other, other one is the truck. And I have a key to a uh, particular lock at my, at my business, and then that's a key to my lawnmower. And I have two sets of keys, but each key, I have knowledge of what they are. If I give you this set of keys, you may be able to identify what keys they are, but you might not know exactly where those keys go. You have to figure it out. You have to you have to figure out where the key go. I already know. Mm -hmm. I have the knowledge of it. Now, the knowledge that I pass on to you with the knowledge of the key require me to give you the information how to utilize the key. Right. Because knowledge to have the key, but the information on how to use the key is two different things. Again, you have knowledge of something, but not have the understanding of it. Mm. So knowledge, understanding, and disruption, all that falls together under, under the category of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So these keys are made to operate the vehicle. But the vehicle is no operable if it doesn't have a battery. So everything in itself ties together. Your life, my life, is tied with something. Mm -hmm. The beginning of knowledge is to have the ability to understand what you know. I said one time before in a message uh, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, that experience has a voice because experience is based on knowledge and have gained wisdom. So the experience that one may have that you don't have will give you the uh, access to do things that you couldn't have done because no one knows it all. Uh, so we, we, we learn from each other. We learn from how to do things by getting to a position of getting knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the two words tonight is wisdom and knowledge. The word wisdom, also let me uh, wish my son and uh, my daughter, Sunshine, Tiffany, uh, happy anniversary. Today is their anniversary. How many years is it, sir? Nine. Nine years. God bless you, man. You got past the itch, which is seven years. Oh, now he's just up here. Just up here. Yeah, it's the wisdom knowledge. I'm not going to get into that family uh, gathering, uh, but I know one thing. I can give you some old man wisdom, <laughs> how to keep your marriage. Uh, so the word wisdom is defined as the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting. It's insight. 
Again, it's the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, or lasting, meaning that has endurance, insight. It means the, in, the ability to, to insight or something, it, to be able to see within. That's wisdom. The word knowledge is defined as facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. So knowledge is the facts, uh, information given, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. I'll give you an example. My, my son, Mo, and Chandler, Chad, uh, operate our vehicles of our business. Uh, Mo drives the, the big orange trailer itself. Chad drives the, uh, the white trailer. Uh, little baby. Little baby. We had to make sure he don't drive too fast. He, he drive like he's speeding a Um uh, So we had to put a guff on his, uh, anyway. But anyway, but neither one of them had the experience, right. nor they had the knowledge. Right. But through one of our uh, training, he trained them, which is uh, Reggie Heron. He trained them, and Charles, Charles Noble, Dan Noble, he, they trained them on how to operate the, the, the vehicles, which they are vehicles uh, with the ability to, mo to, to roll, to drive, to go. So Mo was trained, challenged, he was trained how to operate the, the, the orange trailer, which required uh, extended mirrors, uh, required um, taking your time. You know, other words, don't run with the, with the traffic. You, you control the traffic. You got to look out for those that may not be looking out uh, for the traffic. I saw my son yesterday, challenged, he was driving, uh, taking the old best uh, original charcoal grill to the house, and this guy just cut in front of him out of nowhere. Now, so Chandler, they had to, he didn't get a chance to do the cussing. He didn't get a chance. But I had to keep myself in my mind. <laughs> We're going to get the guy because it, it could have been a disaster. So, so, but that told me that Chad had got knowledge and wisdom from experience mm -hmm. that had gave him information. Mo got wisdom, knowledge, and experience from what was given to him. But none of these things come in play until you have, you're faced with them. None of it has any significant meaning until you actually experience what it takes to have knowledge and wisdom. So, in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7 to verse 12, this is the King James verse. This is the time when uh, King Solomon has now taken range of his father, David, to become king. Now, one king has to essence for the next king to come in play. Right. But Solomon, all the years under his father's tutoring, preparing for the future king, had to learn through watching his father. Right. That's why it's important as men that you carry yourself a certain way mm. because your sons or your, your offspring, your sons and your daughters, your seed, uh, will get knowledge from what you do. Right. The way you carry yourself is more likely they'll carry themselves. Right. It's old saying, monkey see, monkey do. That's right. Uh, so... When it comes down to, to Solomon, Solomon is this young, uh, in fact, Solomon was a very young guy. He, yes. he was in the teens, wasn't he? Uh, he was very young when he took his father. The youngest king, I think, was one of the king. He was like 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, was that real? Uh, well, one of them. It's not, I'm not going to get to that one. But Solomon was very young in his age. Young as a person to, to uh, oversee uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people. In 2 Chronicles chapter set 1, verse 7, it says, in that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Now, Solomon is in position as king. He is the son of David, uh, who is the son of Jesse. So through this linkage here, a king's being developed. Kings come into play. Also, Jesus Christ, the king of kings, came out of, out of the, the linkage of David. Okay. So, correct? Am I correct about that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. So, okay. So, so David uh, is part of the uh, future of what's to come. Right. But David was limited on what he could do for God. Because mm -hmm. David wanted to build God a house, right. a church, a house for God to dwell. And right. God said, you can't do it because of the, the sin that was upon his life, which mm -hmm. we know David mm -hmm. had committed adultery. He did what he wasn't supposed to do. And God said, you're not qualified to build my house. Forgiven, and, but your, your hands are dirty. So the sign was given to Solomon. Right. But before David transitioned, 
He tells the children of Israel, he said, my son Solomon is young in age. He would need all of you that are skillful and talented in all the ways that you are to help him. Now, I'm just going to bring you up to we get to this scripture here. So David's already told the children of Israel, the leaders, to support Solomon. Okay, his time was at hand. So let's, let's move David out of the picture. Now Solomon is king. He's, he's, he's been uh, sanctioned to be the king of, of the children of Israel. And it says in verse 7, In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I should give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Mm -hmm. Not just a thousand people. Right. Hundreds of thousands of people. In other words, almost a, a, a at that time, a people that wisdom were able to be numbered because of so many of them. Right. And he says, in the in multitude, give me, verse 10, this is very important. He says, give me now wisdom and knowledge. Remember, wisdom, ability to discern, right. to judge what is true, what is right, lasting and insight. Thou promise unto David, my father, be established. For thou has made me king over them and knowledge. Not just wisdom, but wisdom and knowledge. Meaning the wisdom, which is to discern the judgment ability, personal through experience. Solomon saw his father through his operation, gave him the experience. That I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people, verse 10, that is so great, so great in numbers. Not so much great people, right. but such a great amount of people. Right. And God said to Solomon, and this is God and Solomon having a conversation. Don't tell me God won't talk back with you. Yeah. Don't tell me you can't have a dialogue with God because right. God will speak to you. The question is, are you listening? Mm. He's always talking, but mm. the question is, are you listening? And then if you're listening, are you listening to be able to, to respond in what God asked you? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thy heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor, in other words, he wasn't uh, narcissistic. That's right. He said, you didn't have for riches. Lord, I want to be the rich. I want to rule the world. He didn't say none of that. Has not asked of the wealth, riches of wealth, or honor, nor the life of their enemies right. as a way of, of, of vengeance, neither yet have asked for long life, hmm. but has asked wisdom and knowledge for whom? Thyself. Mm -hmm. That thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Do you see the conversation God is having yes. with, with, with uh, Solomon? Yes. In other words, Solomon shot God. Because he, 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 he didn't ask for the wealth. It was available. Right. Just for the asking. Because God said, ask me what you will. And Solomon immediately went into a request of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. And God says to him, because it was in the heart. So you can't fake God out. Mm. You can't do something. That's right. In the natural, thing, God don't see it for what it were. See, God says to Solomon, because it was in your heart. It was in your heart to, to lead the people with wisdom now. It was within your heart that you want to govern these people with my direction and my guidance. And God says to him, and it's, go back to the verse, he says, uh, and he never long like, God says, for thou said, thou hast made, made judge my people over whom I have made the king. Mm -hmm. You didn't make yourself a king. Right. I did. Right. Your father didn't make you the king. Right. I did. Right. It was my sanction that you become the king. And wisdom, in verse 12, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee what? Riches, Riches. and what? Wealth, and what? Um, Honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither should there any after thee have the light. Mm. But notice God didn't say, I'm going to give you a long life. Yeah. He didn't say that. Because that's a, that's a, a point of time for every man to die. Mm -hmm. Then comes the decision making, which God made. So as I looked at that, I got a revel uh, what we call a revelation that everything that God said he requested, that he did request, I'm going to give you that, but only one I'm not going to give you. And the reason why God didn't give Solomon long life, because down the road, Solomon got out of control. He became, uh, which he became out, of, out of pocket. He began to take on the things God said not to take on. Though he had knowledge, and he had wisdom more than greater than any man ever had. And even after him, 
But God said, I will not extend him long life. If I extend long life in the condition he's going to be, it's going to be a problem for me. Yeah. When we say the father knows best, God knows best. He does. So Solomon has now been uh, deposited in him knowledge and wisdom. Mm-hmm. I mean, wisdom and knowledge. The ability to lead a people that has never been led by him before. Be able to to, to decide people's lives and decisions like never before. In fact, if you go further into the scripture chapter after this, that was a time Solomon first try of, of his knowledge and wisdom was with two women. Both had a child at the same time. And one of the uh, uh, ladies overslept her child and the child died. And she took the child and put it with the, the lady that the child was alive as though her child died. And the lady that woke up recognized that the child wasn't alive and she knew that the child wasn't there, hers, but she couldn't prove it because it wasn't able, available to be, be proven. So they go before King Solomon and Solomon is here in this situation. He's listening with the street wisdom and he's listening with the knowledge of what they said and one says, blah, 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 based on this, this happened, that, that, that happened. And the other one was defenseless. And then Solomon said, because I can't discern which one who the child belongs to, he says to one of the, uh, uh, his, his leader, he said, bring me a sword. And he took the sword and he said, cut the child in half. So when he was about to cut the child in half, one woman said, don't do it. The other one said, no, go ahead and do it because otherwise, go ahead and take the child's life, which gave up her not being the child's mother. Because right. no mother going to allow their child to be killed under those pretense. Or those circumstances. Right. Then Solomon now was proven to him he had been given wisdom and knowledge. Because he was able to discern truth, discern what was right, and he had insight. Now imagine if we as men and women of God who operate with wisdom and knowledge, insight. We won't make some of the errors that we make. We won't go down some of the direction or path we were going through. Right. If you're like me, I've always said, over my life, that's something I really regret. I wish I'd never done. Yes. I had knowledge, but I didn't have wisdom. Because if the knowledge was good not to do it or to do it, but the wisdom how to carry it out, it was a lack in my life. That's why it's important when you've been ministered to, when you're learning the things of God, knowledge is good, but the wisdom how to conduct that. Yes. It's kind of like uh, we have knowledge that the Holy Spirit exists, but there has to be wisdom how we go about in earth of him. In fact, even Apostle Paul gave wisdom out of 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14. He talked about the order of the, of the church and what we, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. You can be so religious mm. that you be earthly no good. Mm. You got the knowledge, but you don't have no wisdom. Yeah. Because it's like if we came together, as Paul said, and I'm kind of going here back and forth. Mm-hmm. Paul says, he said, if you all come together and you all speak in a tongue, in a language no one knows, the people that come in there who don't understand what you're saying will classify you as being barbaric. Yeah. Because there's no interpretation. Yeah. I'd rather that you speak in a tongue that can be understood than speak in a language no one understands. Mm-hmm. Right. We live that today into some of today's churches. We go rattling off speaking in a tongue, no interpretation, no knowledge, no wisdom, and people may mock you at the church. Mm-hmm. Back then they called it holy rollers. And then for some reason, we thought because we did speak in tongues, we spoke in well tongues, we thought we were speaking in. We all make it soon that we were better than other folk who didn't speak in tongues. But the tongue was not the, sal- sal- the saving grace. Right. Salvation is confession. Right. But we've all been, got, we all been given the part, impartation of the Holy Spirit, but everybody don't speak in tongues. Right. So knowledge says this, do all speak in tongues? answer is no. But for some reason, we omit that to make folks speak in tongues, which is a lack of wisdom. So here Solomon is operating for the first time in his life seeing that God had granted him what he requested. The Bible said God is not slack because of his promise that some men count slackness. He's yeah. faithful. So whatever you lack on one side of your life, if you learn to walk in knowledge and walk in wisdom, God will catch you up with the rest of it. Yeah. And here we find that Solomon now has been proven that he got knowledge and wisdom. So his fame grew out throughout the land to the point that his wisdom is so powerful, his knowledge is so wise, so 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 powerful, that the queen of Bathsheba comes to him and said, I, I've heard of this. I've heard about how wise you were and how knowledge you were. But I witnessed my own eyes 
He said, then she said, I know it's got to be true. Yeah. See, knowledge and wisdom will give you fame. Yeah. It gives you what people need more than anything. It's like a person being a physician. He may have knowledge, but he don't have wisdom how to operate the, the equipment. Book knowledge is one thing. Wisdom, how to utilize it, is what's going to benefit a person. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 through verse 7. This is from Solomon, importing of wisdom, and to now you hear talking about wisdom and understanding. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 and verse 7. Let's get to verse 13 and then to verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 and through 7. He said, get wisdom, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Forget it not, neither decline from thy words of my mouth. And this is uh, the writer is talking to his son and relating to how he should conduct himself. You read the whole chapter, you see he warns him about the, the woman that winks the eye. He warns, she, he warns him about mm -hmm. the world he travels. In other words, don't be caught up in uh, foolishness. There's a lot the father's given to the son. He said, get wisdom, get understanding. Right. Forget it not. Retain it. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. In other words, don't reject what I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. He said, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Mm. Talking about wisdom. Forsake her not, and she shall what? Preserve thee. Preserve thee. If you like me, I've had some wisdom moments that it preserved my life. Yeah. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom, this is, this is the writer, this is, what, this is what the writer said. Wisdom is the principal thing. Now, the word wi principal means First in order of importance. Right. Again, wisdom means first in order of importance. It's important that you have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom will preserve you. Wisdom will keep you where you can't keep yourself. Mm -hmm. You can have knowledge, but the knowledge without the wisdom is less effective. Right. Therefore, get wisdom in all, and with all that getting, get understanding. Understand he said, you get wisdom, but with all that getting, get understanding. Understand what, who you are. He allowed ladies, you know, y'all say this, I think I said it one time before. You, you're talking about you know your value. Well, if you know your value, use wisdom with your value. Mm -hmm. That means you won't settle less for what you were. Mm -hmm. right. If you got to repeat, I know my worth, and you don't walk in the wisdom of your worth, you're worthless mm -hmm. because you don't have no value. Mm -hmm. uh, they ain't gonna like that one. Now, sometimes we quote stuff because somebody else said it. Yeah. You know, you don't need to quote somebody else, and you need to live this what you say. And with all that get to get understanding. So in all that you learn, get understanding. Knowledge, get the understanding. Right. Wisdom, get the understanding. Understand how this thing operates. Understand how this thing functions. Don't just have an assumption. Make sure you understand what you're doing. In fact, understand who you are. See, as a, as a believer, right. I have knowledge and wisdom of who I am. Right. Peter warns us. He says, if anyone asks you the faith, give an answer. You should have answers. Why? Have answers. Your knowledge, your experience is your testimony. The wisdom of how you witness that is another di direction. For instance, say you go out, you can go out and witness to people. Well, you just can't roll up on people like that today. You, you, you can't be, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a demon chaser. Well, that's been proven people that chase them, demon chase them out butt naked. But when you're going to go forth to, out, to do outreach, you have to have a wisdom to do that. Especially when COVID hit, you just can't go up in folks' face now. Talking about, do you know Jesus? <laughs> it's six feet distant. Do you know Jesus? Wisdom will, pervert, will, will preserve you from causing a catastrophic situation. Because mm -hmm. everybody's not receptive to what you got to say. Right. And then because you got wisdom, discernment, insight, you know who to talk to and who not to talk to. Right. Basically, you're on your job. Yes, you've been blessed with the job, but your job didn't hire you to go out and witness. No. They hired you to work. But if you go to your job, to, well, I, I know Jesus. Well, that's good that you know Jesus. That's good knowledge. But your wisdom, Jesus, mm -hmm. is you go to work. Right. A lot of people lost their job being religious. Right. They had knowledge of the word, but only to the letter. Are oh, you learning something? Yeah. Verse 7, and verse, uh, I mean, so verse 13, he said, Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is the life, thy life. Now, you know, he's, Paul, he's taught, Solomon talks, the writer talks about get wisdom. And he said, wisdom is the principal thing, which is the most important. And he said, along with the wisdom, get understanding. Now he goes from understanding. He says, take hold of instruction. I've said this many times in many of my illustrations. It's like most men, we like to figure stuff out by the picture on the box. Only find out we got extra screws. We don't have extra screws. And we use them. They must have blessed. We, we, we in a recession. They're not giving away extra screws. 
if you got enough. Because quality control, the person may not put enough screws in there. So if you don't follow the instruction, you assume you got all these screws, you don't have enough screws. You mean you didn't put the right bolt on the right, uh, 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 what, what is it? Nothing bolt. Nothing bolt. You just, what is, what is this silver thing? What is this round thing? It's called a washer. <laughs> That makes sure it locks good to 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 the uh, to the to the uh, either to the wood or to the the, uh, the, the metal. Yeah. But if you put it on without the washing, then you talk, why it's squeaking? Wow. Okay, you didn't follow instructions. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Instruction is he saying here? He said take fast hold, take fast hold of instruction, mm-hmm. value instruction. Mm-hmm. Instruction will get you to the place you need to go because you may have a vehicle. But if you don't understand the scripture how to repair that vehicle, you're going to cause more problems. Yeah. Why? Because knowledge is power, but power with no wisdom. And without instruction, you can't do the job. Even on a, when you go to a job for a training, you first start on a place of employment, the first thing they do, they give you knowledge of what you're going to be doing. Right. And they try to give you a wise way on how you need to do this. And then they give you instructions. The instruction is how they're supposed to be done. But if you're not listening... If you're not yielding to the instruction, when your trainer walks away, you put your hand in the, in, into the device and they cut your finger off, it's because you didn't follow the instruction. Mm. You can't assume with instruction. You have to have instruction. And most people, not some most, a lot of people in the body of Christ are failing to follow simple instruction. Mm. Simple instruction, walking the word of God. He, God tells you to instruct. He, he said, touch out the unclean thing. He tell you, you get instructions about make sure you, you bring your front to ties and all. These instructions God give us. Yeah. But because we don't follow instructions, we find ourselves in a dilemma. We all we had to do all the time was follow simple instructions. But no, he said, take fast hold. I mean, other words, you may put all that you got on it because this is the way of life. This is the, the way of life. And verse 23 says, keep thy heart with, with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. So here the writer is given information by getting wisdom. He talks about wisdom is the principal thing, which is first and all of importance. Then he said, along with the wisdom, he said, get understanding. And then he said, after getting understanding, he said, take hold fast, take fast hold of instruction. Because out of this, all you're going to is need, out of the heart, come for the issues of life. Yeah. Issues mean I need wisdom, how to deal with my issue. I need instruction on how to deal with issues. I, I need knowledge on how to deal with issues. Why? Because out of the heart of man coming for the issues of life. Things happen. Things will manifest. But because you've got your knowledge, your understanding, you got wisdom, you can deal with the everyday issues. Because they're going to happen. Mm-hmm. The world is in a turmoil. The world is going through a, a, a perishing phase. We, the church, should be knowledgeable of that. Yeah. We should be walking around with our heads down like we have no hope. We have no understanding. We we live in a peerless time. Yeah. And because we live in a peerless time, we know our redemption draws now. Meaning, I don't need to get frantic, yeah. but I need to understand who I am in Christ. Yeah. I got knowledge that he's coming back one day. Until he And when he does come back, or until he do come back, I'm going to occupy. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. going to stay busy doing the work of the Lord. Yeah. I got issues in my life. Issues is this. People issues. The dog got issues. The car got issues. Your house can get issues. But that should cause you to lose focus on the things of God. Yes. Because we got instruction yeah. that times are going to be hard. People talk, oh, Lord, the gas is going up again. Just, just thank God you got money for gas in your car. Yes. Maybe you need to sit down somewhere. Mm. Sit down. Go A to B. You got A, B ministry? Go A to B. But my point is this is, whatever we're going through, mm-hmm. we trust God. That's right. I don't look at my out, uh, exterior of what's going on in this world. The world is going to perish either way. I'm not stuck on focusing on Ukraine. I'm not stuck on uh, COVID. I'm focused on God. What is your purpose and plan yes. for my life? What I'm supposed to be doing in this season of my life? How I'm supposed to motivate people to things of God? I need knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Yeah. I have to have you answer all things pertaining to the faith. Yeah. I can't give you definition about COVID. I ain't had COVID. But what I can't give you understanding is how to live a righteous life. Yeah. I can give you the benefit of being a righteous man. I can give you the benefit of walking upright where God will bless you. He will enlarge your territory if you follow the plan of God. Why? That's all about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, people, what faith, uh, what you believe? Uh, I'm Baptist. But we ain't answer what your denomination and what your belief is. Right. Because you don't understand who you serve and who you are in him, 
you can't give the answer. So first thing you lean to a denomination doctrine, a year or two, some other, I went to some church, they had the, the church uh, a creed on the wall. One person had been to church, they didn't know what it was. He didn't know it was over there. What they call that on the wall? The church covenant. The church covenant. It's, it's, it's general. It's general. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many folks don't know what the covenant of the church is. They just thought it was just somebody was a good writer. He was an artist. He was, it was, you know, he, he just took it off a, a poem and made it on the wall, but he never read it. So when you don't know who you are, you can't defend the faith. Mm. Come on. The Bible says, study, show that self approved unto God. A woman that need not be ashamed. Write the Bible with truth. How do you write the Bible with truth? You have to have knowledge of it. Not only do you have knowledge, you have an understanding of it. And then you have a wisdom how to execute it. Because yeah. if you don't have that, one without the other two don't work. He says, study to show that self approved. Study you. Study to show yourself. Don't try to study to see if I'm wrong, preacher. You, I, I'm going to stick around you and your family. But if you study yourself to be approved of, unto God, you want to be a woman put to shame. Right. It's amazing how so many religions can be strong in what they know except the Christian faith. Mm. Yes. Mm. Christians are about the most lazy faith people I know. We didn't come to church on Sunday in a midday week, sir. We did God, God justice. No, <laughs> no. What your part is to, to study daily. Yeah. Paul said, I crucify my flesh daily. Yeah. Oh, I sacrifice this flesh daily not yeah. to be in opera because it would sidetrack me from, from the promise of God. And he says again, he said, keep that with all diligence for out of the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Never say what you want to do. Just say, God, keep me from doing keep what I shouldn't do. Yeah. See, my knowledge and wisdom and experience is I know I'm subject to do things I'm not supposed to do. Yeah. Because I've done that, I know that because of that, I said, God, don't let me do that in the future. Mm -hmm. How many know before you do something you got no business doing, because you got wisdom, you got knowledge of that, you've got some experience of it, is that we override what we're not supposed to do. And the consequence of not doing what you're supposed to have done now brings them more of a repercussion. That's why we need to walk through the word of God daily. It's out of the heart coming to the issues of life. Mm -hmm. So what's inside of you and I that we need wisdom mm -hmm. on how to carry ourselves? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a single man, and this is going to get related to relationship, a woman, you should be entertaining a man in your home, a woman in your home, by yourself. That's facts. It, it's, it's a good place to the enemy. Yeah, good. In other words, one Bible scripture can lead to a kiss. And one kiss lead to the sheets because we don't follow instruction. See, the world says it's okay to do your thing when God says not so. Right. But because we're not following the plan of God and following instruction that's given to us, and many people fight their leader when instructions are given about righteous living because they don't want to carry out the responsibility of it. But when you love God and you love being a righteous person, when you get instruction about how to do something, not do something, when you don't do what you're not supposed to do and you do what you're supposed to do, your reward is better. It always feels a whole lot better to follow those instructions that are simply given than to fall in condemnation that I got to feel bad about what I have done that I wasn't supposed to do. Because before we do wrong, we get insight through the Holy Spirit. Don't do this. Holy Spirit don't speak to you in tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he clearly speaks to you. Yeah. Don't go down that road. Yeah. He clearly speaks to you. Don't open that door. He clearly speaks to you. Don't watch that channel. He clearly speaks to you. Don't say what you're about to say. Yeah. The warning will come before the fall. But what we do, because we want to do what we want to do, we lack wisdom, mm. we say anything. Mm. Everything you say don't make his, make his law. Yes. Our last chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, this is Apostle Paul, and he's coming with an even understanding of why we need to make sure that we be careful how we conduct ourselves. Look at verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. He says, Thou, he said, Well, for let him that stink it, he stand it, take heed lest he fall. Yeah. See, there's no such thing as a super Christian. No. There's no such thing as a Hulk Christian. Yeah. No such thing as, as a Captain America Christian. A Christian is a person that's following the, the ways of Christ. He said, Well, for let him that think he stand, take, take heed lest he fall. Because where you think you're strong, could be very weak at. Mm. Other words, don't just have this, uh, I'm, I'm good today. Now understand that's a tomorrow. Yeah. I'm good this quarter, but it's a second quarter. So every, every day of our life, we got to make sure we're practicing righteousness and not have this air by ourselves because I didn't do it yesterday doesn't want me I want to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. The same guy that kept me yesterday, I need him to keep me tomorrow. Yeah. Because in other words, if I don't be mindful, if I think 
I've arrived. Little do I know the enemy is coming after me with a greater force to, to shame my testimony. He will. So he well for let him that think he's standing, think he's falling. In other words, when people have made errors, I don't believe he made mistakes. They made errors. They chose to make a bad mistake. Right. Choice. We that have not done that should not take a position that we better than them. Right. What we should be saying, Lord, I pray that you bring them back to that rightful place and not have this error about ourselves that because they made an error that you don't make errors. Mm -hmm. Say, Tiki, lest you fall. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. There have no temptation to take you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, yes, who will not suffer you to be tempted above, then you're able, that you're able, but with the same, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. With it, mm -hmm. yes. That you may be able to bear. What's the way to escape? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. What's the escape? Wisdom. In other words, I'm at the door, but I, I got a wisdom to go to the opposite, another door. If I don't take the wisdom to go to the other door, then I'm putting myself in harm's way. Yeah. But God said, with the same situation that you're battling with and you're faced with, his eye will make a way of escape. But there may not need to be a way of escape because you're not going to be in a position where you need to escape. Because the temptation is not to take you out. It, it, God don't use temptation to, to trick us. No. He don't use sin to test us. Yeah. He never tests you with sin. Jeez. He tests your faith when you believe, mm. but he don't test your, your flesh to see where you sin. Because we're capable of sin. Yeah. <laughs> we're capable of sin. So he's not going to test you with, the, with sin because sin is what we're subject to do. But he would test your faith to believe him for the impossible. In fact, you go to James, he said, man, say that he's been tempted, he's been tested by God. God doesn't test you by faith, by, by your flesh. He tests you on your faith practice. Yeah. Your faith is how you believe. Yeah. If, if God knows my, my position is weak in certain areas, he's not going to present that before me to see what I do. It. He don't play Monopoly with us in that way. He don't play with your, with your, with your soul. He's preserving you. Mm. That's why he gave the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. The problem is, are we following the lead of the Holy Spirit? Or we found the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Because before you say something to that woman or say something to that man, you got a wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Say, no, 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 that, don't say that. Right. Don't make that comment. Right. See, sometimes you can't compliment people. Mm -hmm. If you're coming across, cause you the follow, don't compliment nobody. Yeah. And then if you, if you can't take compliments, don't look to get a compliment. Right. Call thirsty. In other words, get your tail off the scene. Get off. But he says, with the same temptation, with also with the temptation, make a way to escape. If you like me, I'm talking about pray thing. Jeez. God gave me many opportunities to escape certain situations. Yeah. But because I rejected knowledge, I rejected the wisdom, Jeez. I rejected the, the, the understanding, I rejected the instruction, I found myself on the bottom. Mm. Could have been further along. Because the Holy Spirit was leading me. Jesus said, the comfort shall come. He said, lead and guide to all truth. What is that? That's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We think those be only good enough to speak in tongues and show somebody we can dance and shout. Mm. Mm. Well, After you've done all that, you good. still got issues. Still. After you've spoken seven languages and interpret four of them, you still got issues. Still. What keeps you is knowledge. Yeah. What keeps you is understanding. What keeps you is wisdom. In other words, Wisdom tells you, recognize your triggers. Yeah. Recognize those things that get you in a place you're not supposed to be in. Yeah. Recognize those things that lead you to down Come that dark path. In other words, that's the information you already got. Yes, Why do I need to tell you what you already know? Paul's not there. I got to teach you something that you already know. You already know these things. Mm -hmm. But because we reject it, he rejects us. Teaching good. Teaching Lord, good. I wouldn't have did it. No, God said, no, you did because yeah. you wanted to do that. Because I already gave yeah. you information how to do it. Yeah. That's right. I already told you that, 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 that she went for you. I told you that he went for you. Mm. But because you you just had to have it, you got what you what, what you attract. See, one thing about experience is enough to tell you don't do it again. But some of us ain't satisfied until we do it again. Mm -hmm. And now we'll see God. God delivered me. God said, I just delivered you last week. Come on. God got more, I got more to do just keep delivering y'all. I already set you free. I, got, I brought you out of Egypt. Yeah. What is Egypt? Wherever you've been when you were supposed to be and darling, God brought you to the light. We all have experienced the promised land. But because we keep going back to the things that God had delivered us from, we keep staying in Egypt. We, we, we like, we're going to the promised land with the Egypt drawing back, draw back. That's I'm drawn back to the thing I used to do. If you sit around and discuss your conversation about how many, how many houses you don't lay down with, that's not a testimony. That, that, that's just someone being a hoe. 
and trying to glorify it in today's time. A testimony is where I've been, but it's not glamorized. The day you hear someone talking about how many things they've done wrong, they're glorifying in that thing. Yeah. That's not wisdom. See, everybody don't even know how, how, how many how many S's you've been through. Come on. Everybody don't even know that. Some people, some things people can't handle about you. Right. They need to know that you can understand you are compassionate. You got to say to me how many how many houses you you entered in and how many you escaped through the window. See, that's not everybody's business. That's just for you to say, thank God for delivering me. Because yeah. yeah. he delivered you that time. Otherwise, you got to stay out. I've seen them many times church folks do that. They, they, they like to testify. Really, they, they, they want to talk about their they dirty secret. They dirty laundry. Get some Clorox. Get some tie and clean that stuff. You ain't helping nobody tell you your, your, your dirt. What you help people is you got wisdom. You have compassion. Yeah. You have understanding. Yeah. Other words, I, other words, you had a child of wedlock, okay, good. Now, not good. You had a child of wedlock, at least you may relate to the one that had, had one out of wedlock. Right. Your experience, honey, don't do it. Because it's all going to bring you heartache. Now, after you try to give a wisdom, him wisdom, if they refuse to follow it, they rejected the knowledge and the instruction that was given. Now, they live with the consequence. Yeah. That's why, folks don't like this. You have a child of wedlock, we ain't been getting no baby shower for what? What was showering? We need to be showering you with a whipping. Because what's happening is you're going to only experience more turmoil. Mighty quiet on that one. Yeah. It's not about condemning people. We all have sin to come short. But don't don't reward bad behavior. See, wisdom is, is yes, the child was born out of wedlock by the choice of two people. But the point is, what the blessing is that the child is here. Now we can be a blessing to the child, but that'd be a pre-blessing. Because sometimes people get celebrated before time. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, get out of jail. We're going to have a work at home party. No, welcome back to work. That's a lot, but it's true. But you see, make a way to escape that you can bear. So nothing falls on us, comes our way that God does not, doesn't make a way of escape. Yeah. The question is, are you willing to take the way of escape? Have you had enough experience? Have you had enough knowledge? Have you had enough understanding that what you've done one time is not worth repeating? Mm -hmm. Some people repeat bad history. Mm -hmm. And when you get wisdom, I'm not trying to do what my father did. I'm not trying to be in a bad position in life. I'm not trying to be uh, retired broke. I'm not, that's not my, that's my way of living. I've got instruction on how to manage my money. I've got instruction on how to learn to love my wife. I've got instruction on how to maintain my family. Now it falls upon me to carry out what I've learned. If you don't learn, it's because you chose not to learn. Yeah. Verse 23, last scripture. And he says, all things are lawful for me. This is going to, I'm going to break this down. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Look, look at this. Look what Paul said. He said, all things are lawful. It's lawful for me to correct people. It is lawful. If it's within the boundaries where it's something required. But it don't mean always expedient. Right. Sometimes you got to let folks experience. Mm. It ain't so much you have the glory to my, I told you so. It ain't about you told them so. It's about how can you help someone without hurting them? Yeah. Right. How can I push you to your destiny without clipping you? Yeah. All things are lawful for me. Y'all, it's lawful for me to go tell everybody you're going to hell. Based on the life they're living. But it ain't expedient. Why it's not expedient? Because that's a way of giving, doing it in a better way. A more excellent way. That's an excellent way of telling people how to do things versus the way you want them to do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's lawful for me to correct people, but not with expedient. In other words, say someone did something wrong publicly. It can require a public rebuke. Like, I will rebuke you publicly for public stuff, but it's a wise way of doing it. Some things are not caused to be said right now. Some yeah. things you have to weigh them out. Right. Something you got a table. Sometimes you correct people too soon. Sometimes you need to just let them get to themselves and correct the situation. If you confront some people in front of a crowd, you're going to get a front back response. That's right. That's why it's better to know when to do and what not to do. Some of these young folks, you can't walk up on them, catch them by themselves, try to talk to them. Yeah. I, I had a situation, I was in the, uh, me and the other Mike was in Atlanta in our getaway, and his father had two of his sons with him. He was in, in the restroom. And the young kid, evidently, was not raised by him, but been raised by the mother. And the kid put all his pants down. You know, boys do that. The only way was just, 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 just put it all down, just to urinate. 
And he said he little he little 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 tail sitting out. Father start cussing at him. You blank blank. Why you keep your pants? He gotta do all of that. Then I look at him. His pants half on his butt. So at least he can't call it Keller. What how it go? Can't call the pot. The can't call it Keller. The black. pot can't call it Keller black. <laughs> You're both butt naked. Except Joy got little white underwear that only had stains on. And I'm looking at him, and I wanted to say something. But it, it was lawful for me to correct him, but it wasn't expedient. It wasn't the time. Because if it was the time, the Lord would have led me to say something to him, but it gave me observation. Our men, people in general, who don't know Christ, is their nature. Mm. Little kid, you see he was broken. He'd he been doing that. In fact, my grand boy was doing that for a while. And I put it, I said, no, you don't have to put your pain all the way down. Just, you know, just, you know, just, 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 just hold it. No, don't just sit down, just go. No, no, you gotta, you know, use your hand. Because if I didn't tell them, they get eight years old, they still stand there with their pain all the way down in, in, in the stall, in the restaurant. I can't, no, we can't do that, bro. <laughs> No, 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 they stand like they Superman. No, 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 no. no, no hold your head back, boy. Hold it. Shake it. Well, you don't do that. But you teach them. Because knowledge this is if a young man don't know about certain things, he won't take himself. Knowledge and wisdom is you teach your kids how to shower. You teach them how to take a proper bath. Yeah. You teach them about washing their feet. You don't just jump in the shower and let the water go around your head. You, know, you got to get under the water and get soaked up. And you need to clean all parts of your body. It, it, from the arms down on down. I'm not gonna give a class on that, but what I'm saying is, kids don't know if you don't teach them. So don't be shamed what they do publicly when you didn't teach them privately. That's facts right there. But you teach them privately, they'll do it publicly. That's facts. Train up a child the way he should go. Right. And when he go, what he learn when I depart. Because we don't tell our kids not to do that. They be 17 years old, paying all the way down. <laughs> Y'all laughing. I'm, I'm being truthful. And that's why men need not to be absent in your son's life. If you and that woman's not together, you should be absent in your son's life. Yeah. Teach them men things. There's a certain thing a woman can never teach a man. Teach them. Like a man can never teach a, woman, a girl. Mm-hmm. So all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. It is lawful for you to say certain things to people, but it's not always expedient. Sometimes, again, I'm saying it again, what repeating is to weigh it. Mm. Because good things come to them that way. Sometimes things are working themselves out anyway. Sometimes some correction ain't now you have to be made. It's gonna work its way out. Mm-hmm. But if you see a person going directly to the wrong place, yes, it is your responsibility, it's your duty as a believer to put a halt to that. Right. But if they decide they don't want to hear it, then do Bible. The Bible says, shake the dust off of your feet. Dust. Why y'all keep collecting dust? Mm. He says, shake the dust off your feet. Jeez. Some people gotta learn the hard way. See, one thing about being a parent, a parent is you train them between the age. You never stop parenting. But you get to a place that the training get less. Because they get older, they should know by now. If you train them when they was young. Right. If your child don't come to you about adult information, then that's on them. But as long as you have an ear and the wisdom to give them, because all parents doing is trying to give you an insight not to do what they've done. Right. Mm-hmm. Not to do that, not make that mistake. I'm going to say this again, I'm done. My mother told me years ago, baby, don't get too much credit. Because, you know, good, all our credit ain't good credit. I'm not, you don't understand. You know, these times are different. I got $20 here, $15 there, $18 there. Right now, I, I need food stamps. <laughs> I'm maxed out with $18 payments. You know, you know cash, cash, checking the cash, everything. I'm trying to help myself out. All I had to do was not, all I had to do was follow instruction. Her experience was enough. She said, with a credit score back in there, 700, 650 was a good credit score then. Yeah. You know, she said, well, good credit. I'm saying, Lord, Lord, come by here, dear Lord, come by here. Back in the day, this is funny, this is true. They had these stores like um, J.C. Penney back in the day and, and Sears. They'd have you come in, you know, they'd have these little gadgets. Fill out a credit application to get, you know, get a get get a credit card. You get that little, little, little uh, crap they were giving away free. I do, but at the end of the day, as the girl gave you something, she gave it to you free. But anyway, you fill the application and then they get approved. I knew then, when I feel my can anyone get approved? So give me my son, let me get out of here. <laughs> I knew they was coming. But they, 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 didn't have, they didn't have the instant uh, qualification then, like approval. It came to the mess, but you had to fill the application out. But every time you fill the application, application out, it was in your credit. Yeah, 
So you got caught all these inquiries. Yeah. So now you do all these inquiries. That's why you have, every time somebody sends you a credit card information in the mail, don't mean you need to apply for it. Just thank God they see that you, you're doing good. Because you go apply for them, it's going to be against your credit. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you wisdom. I'm giving you knowledge. Good. Because too much credit is bad credit. Yeah. Or too much credit to debt to ratio. Yeah. Got good credit, but debt to ratio. Yeah. I want to buy a house. Well, we can't help you right now. But I got good credit. But girl, you too much in debt. Your debt is higher than, than the ceiling itself. Why? Because you didn't follow instruction. Right. And then having bad credit is nothing to glorify either. Yeah. And that like having credit where you can't go buy something. Can't right. get a piece of bubble gum on, 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 on credit. Been there, done Been that. There. Been there. I, I told experience that had the boys. I knew what I'm doing. Mm. And now I'm at her house. I said, Mama, can you help me? <laughs> she told me, when you go to a credit folks, that you got all that credit. Yeah. 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 And then another thing about wisdom. Y'all stay with me these rental places. Rent their own TV. Rent their own uh, rims and tires. Do, don't you know that means you don't own it? Or rent the own, you pay more than what it's worth versus saving your money to get the right part. Yeah. It's like this. A lot of these stores are popping up. A lot of these uh, uh, used tire places. Back in the day when they had the used tire, we thought that was a good thing. Man, I got yeah. I, I got tire, I got four tires for $20. Yeah, you got scraped rubber. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't put oil on it. it look just as good. Right, just, you still got a little bump in your rim. Why? Because there's no such thing as good quality used tire. They use tire because nobody, they, they no one can use them. But because you think you're getting over, you think you're going to get a little a mile, you're not getting a mile. You do better save your money, get a brand new set of tires mm -hmm. that are going to last you longer than go buy somebody used tire. It's kind of hypocritical. I sold some used tire, you know. They, That's but they, they had good thread on them. Glory to God. Retread. Retread. Yeah, back in the day, they were called retread. retread. And they still do that today. And then even we, if you buy a tire, each tire have a date on them. Sometimes we just buy a tire thing, we got a good deal. You don't know the tire's already expired. Mm. It's the, it, oh, God. I'll say it a lot now. But my point is this is. Wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge has to be unlocked. Only way you're going to unlock it, you have, to, you have to have the key. You got to know the combination. No good thing we were told from them to walk up right. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. Experience has the voice. Get the knowledge. Have power. But talk to someone that got experience. They're like an old fool training young fools. The one thing God says in his word, he loves you extensively. If any man come to Christ as he is, he can be saved. I'm talking to you from knowledge. I'm talking from experience. Yes, there are, uh, there are false gods all throughout this world. But there's only one God himself. There's only one creator. There's only one Jesus Christ. There's only one way to God. It's through Jesus Christ. I don't care how the world tries to justify. Is there any other way to God? No, it's no. There's only one way. It's through the Son. He said himself, unless you come to my Son, you can't come to the Father. The question is, are you willing to unlock the wisdom and knowledge for your future? Because investment is a future thing. You invest today, it may be a return tomorrow, it may be a return six months in a row. Until you do something, you're not going to get the return on your investment. What good is to be a believer if you know who you are? You don't operate with the knowledge and the power. I hear these Steve Harvey people, I hear people that are so called motivated speakers saying all good stuff, but they don't have the relationship that God has for them. And yet the man of God will speak the very thing, same thing, and they get pushed to the side. Because we're celebrity driven. I don't care if you're a celebrity preacher. If you're not teaching God's people the simplicity of the things of God, how to live a righteous life, you are defeating the purpose of God called you into. Yeah. Either have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. My prayer tonight is that you will unlock the knowledge, unlock wisdom, becomes the principal thing. It's the main ingredient for success. You never get to the next level, what we call levels in life, if you don't have wisdom and knowledge. And God knows you got to have understanding. Put them together, unlock them, and watch it work in your favor. You've already had this experience. You've already, you've already had encountered on, what it God. is to do some things. He's the same God as he was yesterday. He doesn't change. His methods is still the same. 
love the Lord thy God with all the heart, with all thy soul, and all thy might. All things will work together for your good. And when you're in a trouble situation, you're in a fit, get some wisdom, unlock the knowledge, unlock understanding. Because understanding also consists of patience. The village is the way, because insight. The first answer, the first yes, don't mean you're supposed to accept it. The first offer means you're supposed to offer, accept it. You ever go to a car dealership? They playing that game as though they gonna go talk to the man. They ain't gonna talk to no man. They going to the coffee room and talk about it. they gonna get you. Yep, fact. But if you go in with your information and with your knowledge and understanding what you're purchasing and what you should be paying for, you won't come out skin up. You skin them up. Remember, they want to sell the car. You the buyer. You in demand, not them. But because you don't follow simple instruction, you go to the dealership on your own. You ain't talking to nobody got wisdom, mm -hmm. who got experience, mm -hmm. who willing to give you information. Mm -hmm. You go in there, come back, come back, you got a car, your answer is 22.5. Mm -hmm. All because you didn't follow the simple instruction. Sometimes you gotta tell them, I ain't give you one dime. No. <laughs> but because you're desperate, <laughs> you gotta let return, you fall for anything. They gotta give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, I pray that you open the eyes of your people, open the ears that they hear. Pray that this message has been a lift to those who've encountered needing of wisdom, not understand. We all need it on an ongoing level, ongoing basis. It just don't stop on yesterday. It's ongoing. We need knowledge on how to treat your people. We need wisdom on how to give them information. We need understanding of the instructions that are given to us. So I pray less of us and more of you. Not of us. I pray for that person who don't know you, but coming to know you tonight. I pray for the, the missionary. The evangelists, the ministers, the gospel, those that carry the gospel, those that are just a righteous people, they will witness to people who don't know Christ will come to him because they have understanding. They know who they are in you. Until then, God will give you praise and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. World changes. Partners, don't forget, this Sunday we'll be in the house if the Lord, if the Lord says so. But in the meantime, continue to pray for our assistant pastor, Joseph Anthony, for his recovery. Pray for our, 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 our friend, Pastor Mike, that God would do what needs to be done in his life. Pray for his son, Justin, he'll be encouraged. And just keep us all lifted up in the prayer. And know that this is the place where we say that the word is on. And know that the prophetess and the prophetess, we love you. Have a blessed night.